Welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. We are continuing once again with our holiday decor series and we are concentrating on Halloween right now. Today we're going to make a very simple Halloween table runner. And since I had this wonderful print of haunted houses and just, um, it wasn't just a random toss print. I thought this would make a beautiful table rental. So, um, I'm going to feature it in the one we are doing. Now, you need to cut this piece um, anywhere from about 9 to 12 inches wide by the width of your fabric. Mine is 11 inches wide because that would take in the entire picture. And for those of you who are wondering, this print is called Haunted Hill by Carrie Phillips for Cloth Works. And I probably got it in 2014 or 2015, so I doubt if it's available unless it's on Etsy or something, but uh, you might find it at a place like that. Then for your backing fabric, and it's also going to be a border, uh, you need a piece of fabric that is four inches wider than your panel. And since mine is 11, I mean, not four, I'm sorry, eight inches. It's going to give you four inches on each side, eight inches wider. So since mine is 11 inches, I cut my backing 19 inches wide. And you also want it the width of the fabric. Then you need two other strips that are width of the fabric that are two inches wide and then folded in half and ironed. And that's all we're going to need for this. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to lay our back fabric aside for the moment. And we are going to stitch our little strips with raw edges together where you folded it to the raw edge of this. We're going to put one down each side. Of our panel. Now I'm going to put a couple pins in here to start it and you can pin the whole thing if you want uh, but I like to adjust it as I go so once I get it started I'll just make sure it lines up as I go and I, I failed to mention that you should cut off the selvage you know that ugly white stripe on the ends on both sides before you start. And if these don't come out exactly the same length, we'll just trim everything up to the same length. It's no big deal. Okay, let's go to the sewing machine and start sewing. On this seam, we want to take slightly less than a quarter of an inch. Maybe what's called a scant quarter inch. And since my presser foot's not quite a quarter of an inch wide, I'm just going to use that as my guide. And the reason we want it less than a quarter inch is our next seam that's going to be on top of it, we will do a quarter inch, and therefore this first seam won't show. Now we want to take our backing fabric and with right sides together, 
We're also going to sew it down each side and you'll notice it's wider. That's okay. We're going to sew it just like that with that extra in the middle. This time we want to take the full quarter inch seam allowance. Now let's turn our runner right side out. And I want to mark the center of the front. And I'm just going to do that by folding it in half and cutting a tiny notch and then of the back do the same thing Now we want to iron it and we're going to iron it by lining up these notches on both ends. So give me a moment while I get it all nice and lined up. Okay, I pinned it on each end and then kind of gave it a tug down the middle to get it even. And now we want to iron it and iron our little border, orange border towards the outside border. I'm going to stick a few more pins down the center here. Just so we keep it nice and even. Now, at this point, if you want a quilted runner, you could slide a piece of batting in here. It would take some time to get it all nice and smooth, but it can be done. And then you could quilt around some of these pictures or, or down some straight lines. I'm going to leave mine like it is. I'm not going to quilt it, but uh, a quilted one looks real nice too. Okay, at this point, going to bring, well, first we want to trim the edges because we want to make sure they're nice and even. So I'm going to remove my ironing board here. And I'm going to line this up straight on a line 
my table, my cutting table. I'm going to get my long ruler and my blade and I'm going to find, I'm going to cut this at the half inch mark so that everything hopefully will be lined up. We'll have to check the back. Yes. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Make sure it's nice and straight. Because I'm cutting at a weird angle there to not get in the way of the camera. I didn't get cut all the way through. You want to make sure you hold your ruler nice and straight. And Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics has the best idea. And I use this idea in my on my big cutting table. And that is to put a weight at one end of your ruler to hold it down. And it really helps a lot. Now we're going to put right sides together. And we're going to pin this in place. On both ends. And then I'm going to take it over to the machine and I'm going to put in about a half inch seam just to make sure I catch all the layers. They should be nice and even, but they can slip around ever so slightly on you and you don't catch it. So I'm gonna take a little wider seam allowance. Okay, let's go do that. Now that that's done, I'm going to clip my corner right at the fold. Okay, then I'm going to turn it. inside out till it makes a point on both ends. And you want that point right down the center. And I, using my measuring here, I, I'm just about a quarter of an inch past the mark here. And the same would be true if I pulled this over. So it's centered. Okay. Now we want to steam it really, really good. And 
in addition to steaming it, I'm going to use, um, you can use just regular starch, or I like to use uh, Best Press. It's a starch alternative, and it's a lot lighter weight. It, it doesn't make your fabric as stiff. Got a pen still in the middle of that. I buy it by the gallon and put it in a in my own spray bottle, but I'll put a link to it uh, down below. So I'm going to give this a good spray. Then I'm going to iron it with a dry iron first. And my steam is still heating up. So I'll come back and give it a steam after the starch has set just a little while. Let me fix the other end before. Okay, while we're waiting for my iron to steam up, uh, or to get hot enough, I'm going to pin a, this uh, little border strip here, this orange one, pin it down, and then I'm going to take it over to the machine and top stitch it right next to the edge. That will keep everything in the, um, in the right location so that after it's folded up in the closet for a year and you take it out your uh it doesn't uh, the fold on it your edges don't get messed up okay let's take it over to the machine and stitch it and then we'll come back and give it a good press once again, I'm using a contrasting thread so you can see it. But if I were making this for myself, I would probably use an orange thread or even a purple that would match the background. it's all seamed down everything's going to stay in place now and I'm going to give it a really good steam hmm. my iron's acting up a little bit I don't know what the problem is doesn't want to steam. There we go, maybe a little. Okay, I'll steam it a little better later. move the ironing board and 
Let's lay it all out. I see a stray thread. I need to cut. And there we go. There is our table runner. Kind of try to center it there in the picture. All ready for our table. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something from it. If so, would you please like and subscribe so I can continue to make more videos. I appreciate each and every one of you that views this. We're going to continue on uh, with a few more projects for Halloween, and then we will start on Thanksgiving. So I hope you will join us again next time. Remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord.